I was asked a question to explain the reasoning behind the Chandrasekhar limit and the Oppenheimer Volkoff limit because the textbook doesn't go into much detail. Well, there's a reason the textbook doesn't go into much detail because these limits are very interesting, but they are um, explained by um, atomic physics, quantum physics, and uh, that level does go rather beyond the scope of this course. Um, but in essence, I'll go through and maybe try and add a little bit more to what I've talked about previously. Uh, the concept is still one of hydrostatic equilibrium. Hydrostatic equilibrium is what makes uh, big things in the universe round. Um, if they're not subject to sort of tidal effects or sometimes effects caused by rapid spinning, most things in the in uh, large objects in the in the universe are well round. I mean, um, uh, in by which I mean planets and stars. And the reason that they are round is because of gravity pulling them in, and something else pushing them out. Uh, in a star's case, this hydrostatic equilibrium, equilibrium in, a, in, a, in the case of a functioning star, a normal star, the outside pressure is, is caused by the gas pressure and the radiation pressure coming from the core of the star. But when you have a white dwarf star, that doesn't happen. Instead, in a white dwarf star, the electrons, the, the um, the atoms are squeezed as close together as they possibly can be. And instead of radiation pressure, what supports the size of the star is something called electron degeneracy pressure. The electrons, normally if you have a, a solid, then you have like bonding between the particles. And this bonding involves the electrons and outer shell electrons. But this goes a bit beyond that, in that the electrons inhabit the absolute lowest energy states that they possibly can um, by, by quantum physical principles, uh, the Pauli exclusion principle, for example. Um, and that sort of squeezes all of the normally existing empty space between, between atoms gets squeezed out and you get something that is incredibly high density. So electron degeneracy pressure supports against the gravity. In the case of a neutron star, um, and why is there a limit? The limit is because there's only a certain amount of, of uh, force that that kind of pressure can withstand. So as a, as a white dwarf gets more massive, this is kind of interesting, it gets smaller. So bigger in terms of mass white dwarfs are actually smaller in terms of size, simply because the electron degeneracy pressure is kind of a fixed value, but the gravity gets bigger, the self-gravity, with the more massive stars. But there comes to a point where that, that can't exist anymore. Um, and you can there's a graph of size against it. It sort of suddenly collapses at, at about 1.4 solar masses. Um, and, oh, hey, there's the graph there. So... Um, Here's this graph. This, this Chandrasekhar limit is because that is the 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 size at which it's, it it doesn't become possible because the electron orbits become very close to the speed of light or something quite like that. I, I must admit the full details. I haven't gone out and looked this up again recently, and uh, and they are certainly well beyond the scope of this of this course. So what happens beyond that limit? Um, if something approaches that limit already existing, so um, if a white dwarf becomes more massive over time, which can happen if its gravity attracts material from another star that it's orbiting, then what happens is a very big explosion. Uh, you don't get a neutron star formed because the, the explosion just rips the thing apart. That's a, 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 is it a type 2a supernova. It's, it's the one that's used in... In, uh, or type 1a supernova, the one that's used as a, as a standard candle because they pretty much always give off exactly the same uh, amount of luminosity. Um, but if during the process of formation you have a very large core which is collapsing, uh, then in that case, during that process, 
you can overcome the electron degeneracy pressure and hand wavy it, what happens is the electrons get pushed into the protons. The neutrons stay there and they create this, this neutron superfluid, which is basically just made from neutrons. There are a whole host of interesting YouTube videos here which try to explain it without much mathematics and, and really don't succeed. Um, but in this case, it's just literally neutrons pushing against each other as close as you can get. And the density of a neutron star approaches the density of, the, of, a, of, a, of a subatomic particle, the density of a proton or a neutron, because that is the highest density you can get. I, I hope that answers your question as best we can. What the IB expects you to know is it basically expects you to know that it's a hydrostatic equilibrium process between gravity um, squeezing and then pushing outwards is normally gas pressure and radiation pressure in a normal star, electron degeneracy pressure for a white dwarf and neutron degeneracy pressure for a neutron star.